Logan, the best film of 2017, hands down. The most memorable film and my personal favorite. We're going to go in depth. It's going to be a full spoiler review of Logan, why I love it, why I think it transcended itself from the comic book genre. So sit tight, get your popcorn, get your soda, whatever you need. This might be a long one, but like I said, I'm thoroughly going to dissect this movie and just go so deep into this film. It just means so much to me. And this video, I had to do it. It just something I've been looking forward to. So, yeah, let's talk spoilers. Um, again, spoiler alert. This film right here, which came out early March of this year, no matter how many films I saw, and whether it's independent films, mainstream, Oscar-nominated possibly films, no one has set the bar higher than Logan, and I'm going to get into why. It's just so many reasons. And this film, this is the only film I've gone many times to the movie theater to pay to see, and I've seen this like six times. And each time was a very rewarding experience. And yeah, it just it just had a profound impact on me, very personally. Everything from the cinematography, from the character, from the story, everything. It's just pure perfection. It's a masterpiece. I don't see one flaw in this film. Everything worked. You know, people that dislike this film... You know, I don't understand you, and I don't want to, because I just don't see how you could just dislike or hate this film. It just, it did everything right. It got everything right, and it's just a beautiful end to one of the most iconic combo characters, and that is Wolverine. And we finally got to see the performance Hugh Jackman deserved and been wanting to do for a long time. And a lot of that has to do with you know, 20th Century Fox taking that step further, you know, after the success of Deadpool, I'm glad they were able to make an R-rated Wolverine film, and this is what James Mangold intended, as well as Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart. It was just a fantastic finish to their characters. But yeah, uh, let's start in the beginning, right off the bat, the opening credits, you know, we see Logan waking up in his limo. Well, he, first you don't know where he's waking up, and then he gets out of the limo, and you can tell he's like a chauffeur or something, and there's these like gangbangers like messing with his uh, rims, and he just proceeds to tear them apart. Pure berserker rage Wolverine from the comics that grew, we grew up reading about and loving, and we finally got to see it in all its glory, and it's all its graphic R-rated bloody as hell glory and it was amazing i mean he just shredded these dudes just oh that's what we've been wanting to see and we never got that with the x-men characters because you know they made it pg-13 which is an appropriate rating you know because everybody's gonna gravitate to their own x-men character whether it's cyclops you know gene gray like storm kitty pride whoever I felt like Wolverine never got its due in those X-Men films because he's just, he's the most uh, prone to violence, pretty much. I mean, the dude has claws. He's like a walking metalhead Freddy Cougar, basically. Just, you know, it's just he was meant to just graphically tear people apart. He's like a wild animal, and you just see it, um, obviously... And blatantly in all the Wolverine movies, as each as each uh, film progressed, the X Men films, you can kind of see that, like them wanting to push the envelope, but they never did until this movie came out. So we finally got to see that. It was great. You know, we would see like little snippets, like hints that Wolverine just could, you know, tear people's limbs off and stuff like that. Because we just see little. Subtle things like blood in his claws, which was pretty cool. We got, you know, like in X2, X-Men United, when he tore those uh, people up <laughs> in the in Xavier's school. That was an awesome sequence. So I like the unrated cut of 
the Wolverine was just tearing up the ninjas. And, you know, it just, we got a little taste of this, this full blown Wolverine. But other than the R rating and the graphic violence and them finally doing justice to the character, that's not what makes this movie great. That's just, that's just part of it. <laughs> that's just like icing on the cake, you know, but what really set this film apart is how the story unfolds and, um, you know, as it progresses and, you know, we get to see Logan being very world weary, just broken down. And I love that. It, it, he, they humanize the character and I love it when movies do that with certain characters, they humanize them so you can relate to them. And he's just been through the ringer. I mean, Wolverine has been through how many wars he's been through all the wars. Not only that. But just looking back at all the films, he lost Jean Grey, he lost every everything. And but I like that this doesn't tie in with the other X Men films. It just feels wholly original, standalone, and just the fact that it's titled Logan, just right there in itself, sets it apart from everything else. They had a very independent feel, like a hell or high water feel, and I, I loved it. But anyway, after that great opening sequence, we just tore this dudes apart, you know. And I love the fact that they finally cursed, you know, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's, that would be his initial reaction. They messed with their car. I mean, they just shot buckshot in, into his uh, rental, rental limo. <laughs> so that was great. And even the villain of uh, Donald Pierce. Yes, um... He's played fantastically by this actor. I, I've seen him before. He was in Narcos. Uh, Boyd Holbrook played him fantastically. He played him with a subtle menace, yet he was kind of like a fan in a way, which was great. I That was very refreshing. Like He's like, I'm a fan, by the way. I, I just love his uh, solid accent he has. And, you know, just... He was a very effective villain, and he wasn't the main villain. I think um, there is a main villain besides um, X-24, you know, Wolverine's clone. It's mainly the villain of this film is pretty much like time and how you use it. You know, like Wolverine is running out of time, and he's still world-weary. He's still cynical. He's still down on his luck. He doesn't want to believe in anything. He doesn't want nothing to do with this girl or anything like that. So that's what I love the most about Logan. And, you know, X-24 worked because it was like in with the new, out with the old. And I love how they touched on that. And they were going for an old man Logan feel and they really got that. I and mean, I'm glad they made this a very personal story. Like I said, it was a great story arc. Not only for... Um, Wolverine, but also for Professor Xavier, because you seem to forget, but yeah, um, Patrick Stewart and Hugh Jackman have been playing these roles for 17 years. It's not only Hugh Jackman, it's also Patrick Stewart. That, that's crazy. You know, and Patrick Stewart is such an iconic legend, just a legendary actor, you know, from Star Trek Next Generation, you know. Picard, and to see him in the role of Xavier, he just fit the role perfectly. And here you see him shine too. It's uh, heartbreaking to see him this way. You know, he has like dementia, and Alzheimer's, and you know, he has these attacks where he sends like shock waves. It's crazy. I, I love how they utilized the powers here more as like a burden, you know, like. <laughs> They're burdened with these powers. They, they, it's just, it's great. Like I said, James Mangold finally got to do the movie he did. He directed the hell out of this. He should be proud. Um, you know, I was so proud watching this film. But yeah, as, a, as the story unfolds, very different tone, darker tone. You know, is said in the future, uh, maybe the years 2029 or something like that, or 2025. Who knows? But it's it's just great. Like all the mutants are pretty much all extinct, and uh, you know he meets 
Laura along the way. This is one lady. Uh, this is a Mexican lady. Fantastic actress, by the way. Her name is uh, Elizabeth Rodriguez, I believe. And she's been in a few things, and she was great here. You know, having take care of Laura and helping those kids out in the research facility. Some people uh, complain about that, like how it's the best documentary, how they filmed that, um, you know, the footage she had on her phone, how they filmed that, like very, like, like the guards never took her phone away or anything like that, but that's it's just a minor nitpick. It's not a ginormous red flag at all, you know, it's just at least they utilized a way for us to see what went down in that facility, you know. Which I thought was pretty neat, and it was very effective. And I love that funeral scene where he has a client, and he's just drinking his ass off, you know, good old Logan, <laughs> chugging the booze down. And she's like, Logan, the Wolverine, is that you? And he's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I, just, I love how Hugh Jackman just, just says fuck. Like, he just, like, like, get away from me. That's how I feel when telemarketers call me. Like, oh, fuck. Get, get away from me. Stop calling me, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's great. And he, does, he doesn't want to be that guy no more. He, like, loathes people calling him Wolverine. He's just tired. He doesn't see himself as a hero or a superhero or a legend or, or nothing, you know? So when people call him Wolverine, he kind of just cringes like, oh. Don't even go there, buddy. I don't. I don't want to hear that shit. Why? Why are you calling me that? You know. But still, it's like he's uh, so torn apart. Like he's very conflicted. Like you see that shot of him in his bedroom, looking at his dog tags, just reflecting. And I like the subtle Easter eggs. Like you saw the sword that was given to him in the Wolverine, which was great. Um. Yeah. So we meet. Uh. I'll call him the albino. <laughs> For now, maybe his character will come back to me. But, yeah, he was in Apocalypse, I believe. And now he gets to be played by this actor. I forgot the actor's name. I apologize. But he's a great British actor. He's known for comedy. And I thought he was great in this role. And I'm glad that he was there, you know, helping Logan along the way. <laughs> trying to keep him out of trouble. And he's the one that finds an adamantium bullet and just gives him shit for it. You know, gives him shit for everything. <laughs> so, I like characters like that. They just remind you what a piece of crap you are sometimes. To, <laughs> even though it's annoying. Like, I know. I know I'm fucking up. You know, I just... He was that kind of character. I like the, their banter in the beginning. Um, yeah, so we get introduced to Lara. And he takes the money from the lady. To help them cross. And you need to get over the Canadian border. So. Then. This is when the movie kicks into full gear. I was already engaged already. I was already engaged. Because how totally different it feels. I mean we got. You got freaking Wolverine. Just living the civilian life. Laying low. Being like an Uber future driver. <laughs> Uber limos I guess. You know. And just just trying to make a buck. <clears throat> just trying to pull through. His plan is very simplistic. He plans on buying a, a boat. You know, like a yacht maybe. Who knows? Something he can afford. to get, So he can live out in the sea. Because of Professor Xavier's uncontrollable mind shockwaves. I mean, you know, like um, Donald Pierce said. They flagged him. His mind as a weapon of mass destruction. Which was... Very intriguing, you know, to, <laughs> very intriguing. So, and uh, you know, like, Charles, he just, um, I like how he really captured that, like, how someone, like, a senior citizen would act, like, with dementia or Alzheimer's, they just, you know, um, they think of something, and they hold on to that, and they just kind of repeat it to themselves, it's just like, it's on replay all the time in their head. Like, he was like, the Taco Bell, get the big chalupa, you know what I'm saying? Like, that just was not out of context. It just, he would really act that way. It was so sad to see him that way. It was, it was you know, fantastic acting by, um, by Mr. Uh, Patrick Stewart, sorry. Fantastic acting all around. 
you know, and then we get to Lara. She, you know, snuck in the back. It was great. <laughs> I like when she threw the pipe at Donald Pierce. It just bounced on his freaking head. <laughs> it was great. And uh, poor Albino, man. He get... It was kind of messed up. Logan tried to have him do his dirty work, but he, I guess he didn't think he would regain conscience, and he did. And this is where it goes crazy that that company, uh, I forgot the name, uh, Trigen or something like that. Yeah, they come, all the mercenaries come. And I like how all the mercenaries have, like, cybernetic parts. It's pretty badass. I like that. The Reavers, I guess. Pretty cool. Um... And then what happens, you get a great sequence. You know, even, this is crazy. Like, Logan basically was going to leave Laura. He was like, that's not, you know, <laughs> that's not, she, you don't want nothing to do with her. That's not our problem anymore. He just, all he's focused on is Xavier. That's it. Because he sees Xavier as a father figure. It feels like that's his responsibility. That's his burden. You know, he's stuck with him one way or the other, and he, he has to take care of him, but he don't want to take on her. And Charles, at Charles B. Hess, he's like, come on, Logan, we got to get the girl, Logan. <laughs> I like when he tries to talk Spanish to Laura, um, Xavier. Choo-choo, and it's not a choo-choo. <laughs> you know, Daphne King, Daphne King, the actress who portrays X-23, a.k.a. Laura, Wow, one of the greatest debut performances and child acting performances I've seen in any film. Seriously, this girl should have a career after this film. If she doesn't get more parts, I'm going to berserk her rage on all these damn studios that don't hire her. <laughs> and give her good scripts. Like she, she needs to get like golden goddess agents. To help her pick, you know, the best roles. Because she deserves it. This kid's going places. I'm telling you. Anyway. Uh, you know, they get surrounded. Donald Pierce comes out. I just love uh, his charisma. Boyd Holbrook, the way he plays him. Just the way he's sinking his teeth in the role. Smiling, you know, that gold dude. <laughs> and I love his uh, glasses, by the way. His shades. His like, red, ruby-looking shades. Badass. And... You know, we get a fantastic show down there. You know, Logan's outmatched. He is out of his prime. As we saw earlier, like, when he was, like, just trying to push out the, the bullets he took. He, his healing factor is just fucked at this point. You can tell that he's not he's not the same Wolverine anymore. He's just Logan. He's just broken down, brittle man. You know, he needs a damn walker. Like, it's crazy. At one point, like, he needed reading glasses, you know? Because his vision was going blind. It's crazy. And that's... So, yeah. So, in the very beginning, I was loving it right off the bat. I, I love where they were going. And it just got better. And this action sequence that happens is one of the best action sequences. Like, there is... Uh, Laura comes out. Well, they send this John Cena looking fucking clone. <laughs> like, he's like a mix of John Cena and Batista or something. The dude goes in there thinking he could just manhandle Laura. Uh-uh, buddy. <laughs> she's a feisty one. So she comes back and she just rolls this dude's head. She just rolls it like a, bo <laughs> like a bowling ball. It was great. It's a great moment. I remember seeing it in the theater. Everybody's like, what the... Like, wow. Did not see that coming. How brutal was that, right? Just to send a message like, yeah, that, I'm not to be fucked with. <laughs> you think, Wolverine's a savage? Mm-mm. I'm his daughter. I'm ten times more savage than that. <laughs> so she just proceeds to shred these dudes up. It's great. And I love when uh, Don Pierce says, no, no. And he just quickly gets behind his henchman like, oh, <laughs> Is it she heals? Don't shoot her. She heals. You're like it's great, great scene, man. You know, Wolverine too. Is like holy crap, like holy shit. And then chaos ensues, and it's just a great action sequence. She's just like Metal Gear Solid, straight up murdering these dudes, just sneaking around, dropping down on them, putting her claws through their necks. Like it's great. I freaking 
love this. Like, there's action sequence. And the, the one of the best parts of this action sequence is when they get in the limo, they get in the car, and Logan says, hold on, and they try to crash through the chain link fence. And when we see movies, what would normally happen? They go right through, right? This time they didn't. That there's a one strong ass fence, you know, and it makes it so believable. It's just like, you know, what? That didn't work. That cliche didn't work this time. You're damn right, because it just feels so grounded in reality. I like that subtle little touch, you know, James Mangold inserted into the film, and you know they had to reverse and just make it even more harder for them to escape. It was great. And, you know, that line, Charles says, she's just like you, exactly like you. Like, yep, it's confirmed, buddy, you have a daughter. And <laughs> her name is Laura, she's a little badass, you know, she's, daddy would be proud. Um, man, that was such a great sequence, you know, then racing <laughs> across, trying to get away from them, and then they made it just in time before the train hit them, it was, it was great. You know, you were like, like you, Laura freaking like, just taking out bullets with her mouth and spinning it out. She's a beast. I love this girl. This girl's amazing. I love that, you know. And, you know, that I love when one of them, they have like a claw. <laughs> the claw henchman puts his cybernetic arm through the window and she just dissected, just took out a clean, clean cut, took out his uh, cybernetic arm. That was badass. You know, they get away. And some people think this is where the movie slows down. And it does. It slows down. But it slows down for character purpose and for them to build up even more on the characters. I love it when a movie can slow down to concentrate on their characters and make us dive into them even more. To get a better understanding of where everybody's at right now. You know, what's on like Logan's mindset or Charles' mindset. I, just, I love that. You know, just enriched the characters for me even more. You know, we get more backstory that they were experimenting on all these kids. And it's just horrific stuff, man. You know, like in X-Men, we've seen that before through Magneto where they kind of like, given his background, like he's like a Holocaust survivor that was great, which makes Magneto one of the most fascinating uh, villains in comic book, you know. Uh, and we got to see that, but with kids, man, whew, that's just brutal stuff, you know. And they were just torturing these poor kids and trying to create the perfect weapon, the perfect mutant weapon. It was it was crazy, and how they got away, and it was pretty badass. Like, you know, like how the kids, <laughs> like they, what, what, they had one kid with the pyro uh, attacks, like he just inflamed this one dude. That was messed up. One, one of the kids just dove off and just committed suicide because he didn't want to be a weapon. And I like that. It just symbolizes what Wolverine went through with the Weapon X program. You know, they try to make him a freaking weapon. So I think that, in a sense, had the, started the wheels turning in Logan's mindset. Like, maybe I should help out these kids. Or her. I mean, her. Because, you, you know, they said the kids were in Eden. You know, so he didn't know that. Um, but yeah, and I like that sequence, well, the scene in the grocery store, where Laura's just picking shit out, she's picking Pringles, and the guy's like, you, you know you're gonna have to pay for that, right? Nope! <laughs> they just suplex your ass, and just take these two claws and just jab them through your head. <laughs> and I love that, I love that, you know, Wolverine trying to be a father figure, like, no, not cool, and then proceeds to just jack... His phones, the cigarettes, just help yourself, you know. Daddy, daddy of the year right here. <laughs> I love that. Um, and she scowls very often. And it just it just made her so fascinating. I like her scowl. That's one kid you do not want to F with in the playpen. Like, seriously. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Can you imagine, like... Growing up, like, having to ask her out, like, in high school or middle school. Ugh, you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Laura, she's such, such a badass. Daphne King really nailed her role. And just, uh, that this her performance sort of really um, enriched 
uh, Logan's character and Professor X character, you know, because they got, you got somebody to care about, you know, like, and we can all relate to that, you know, like having a kid to take care of, you know, especially if it's not your, even your kid, you know, you just feel that responsibility, like, I have to care for this kid no matter what, you know, and even though Logan, you don't want no part of that, like, you start seeing that, like, the internal conflict, like, okay, maybe this is, I'll do this right thing once and for all, then maybe it's just not about the money, you know, even though he insists that's all it is, and then, you know, we get um, the introduction of Xander Rice, I believe, and he's the head of this program, and just, the actor was great, too, as well, who played this role, because he brings in a weapon, and you don't know what it is yet, so we'll touch on that. As the film proceeds, you know, they get into this, like, in Vegas, they go to Vegas, they get a hotel, you know, and Logan gets a car, it's very, very uh, normal, I would say, like, very pedestrian, <laughs> Just uh, going about your day. And I, I like that. I like... That's why it's so different, you know? It's not like, you know, like the Dark Knight felt the most uh, grounded for people. And they said that it's just more of a crime thriller, a comic book film. But, you know, you still feel like you are in Gotham City, in a way. I mean, you got Christian Bale driving a freaking Lamborghini. Come on. You know, so we can't all relate to that. I mean, it's freaking Bruce Wayne, you know? He's a billionaire. But... Here is Logan is just your everyday guy. You don't have money like that to get around. You have to buy a broken piece of shit truck that needed new tires because they were bold. Do you know what I mean? I love that. I have to deal with that shit on a regular daily basis. We all do, you know. Fucking tires go bald. We get a nail on it. We got to fucking change the tires. It's annoying. Or, you know, we got to get into a new car because your old one's a piece of crap. You know, things like that. And he finds out about Eden from the comic book. And I like that. I like that they implemented the um, X-Men comic books here. That's just another symbolism as to why Logan is the way he is, why he acts the way he is, why he has that view on everything, you know. Like, this is like ice cream cakes. This is like ice cream for pussies or something like that, he says. <laughs> for bedwetters or something. Like, he just loves the X-Men comics and their existence, like, because they're, like, idolizing them, you know, it's great, because we get to see Wolverine, the X-Men comic, you know, yellow spandex, classic look, of course, it's just a great Easter egg, it not only worked as that, but it served its purpose to just, you know, enrich his character even more, too, as to why he's so cynical, because he doesn't see it as the glory days or anything, he just sees it as a painful reminder of what he has lost because he has lived such a long life and he just he's just so miserable at this point you know so i i love that they implemented the x-men comic books it, it was great it didn't necessarily like break the fourth wall like it wasn't like some deadpool fourth wall breaking you know <laughs> so and little subtle things like i like how james mangled implemented the western classic shane that Professor X was talking to Laura about. Like, oh yes, I remember seeing this as a child. It's a great movie, you know? I, I love that. And, you know, Laura's fascinated with that. And I just love their connection. I like, I like that from the beginning, Pro Professor X was telepathically, was communicating with uh, X-23. He wasn't just talking some crazy mumbo-jumbo nonsense, you know? So I like that. And then we get the most insane bloodbath sequence with, uh, <laughs> we get the Reavers. They show up. And as soon as Logan comes back, you know, freaking Charles loses it and just sends a shockwave. And when he does that, everybody's just like frozen and just like, I don't know what happens. Maybe their brains are sh shrinking as time progresses or something. But they're just like, in this unmovable, paralyzed state, we're just like, you know what I mean? Like, they're just, like, vibrating, uh, you know? It's so crazy, freaking creative. I love that. I love how they utilize their powers here, you know? So, oh, man. And Logan's the only one that can just kind of get through it, you know, because of his healing factor. 
They just getting through it slowly. He had to put his claws through the walls. And then he starts putting the claws right through all these mercenaries. Freaking nuts. Like, like that one guy. Oh, man. I'll never forget that. I see so many times when he's like slowly. He sees him. He's turning. He can see his eye. And he's like, holy. Like, I can only imagine what's going through that guy's head. He's just like, holy crap. This dude is going to straight up. <laughs> this dude is going to straight up put those claws right through my eyes. Oh, my God. Lord, help me. <laughs> like, seriously. And, yes, man. He just starts putting the claws in, pulling them out slowly. And he has to implement that syringe on Charles to get him from, like, having those crazy seizures. Oh, my God. Fantastic sequence. I love that. I like it. It was, like, very shaky. It wasn't, like, shaky cam. Like, overblown like that. It was just the right amount, you know, where you got to see everything still. Great sequence there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah. And it's crazy how they didn't kill... Um, I think his name is Caleb. Maybe I'm wrong. The albino. It's coming to me, people. It's coming to me. Caliban. Caliban. Yeah, I felt so bad for his character, you know, because he was in a position where, you know, what would you do, you know, like, he really cared for uh, Charles, uh, not, maybe not so much Logan, but I like his overall story arc, how he tried to redeem himself by helping them, and we'll get to that towards the end. Yeah, man, poor guy, they tortured him, like, that That sequence where Donald, man, he's very menacing, that sequence, when he just shines the light on him, he's just melting his face away, like, he's like a freaking vampire, was a great sequence. So we get through all that. And then we get um, things like uh, subtle things like in the radio. Oh, this happened in the Rochester, New York or something like that. Where the Xavier, um, the X-Men school is, the, the mansion, Xavier school. And then they mention, oh, the, this that hasn't happened since the, the X-Men died or something. So yes, it is strongly suggested. And I do, I do believe this happened. Strongly hinted and suggested that uh, at one point Charles lost total control of his mind and ended up killing like most of the X Men. Where there's uh, Jean Grey, Cyclops, Storm, Beast, maybe Kitty Pride, maybe all of them. Don't know. But I just love how they uh, have little subtle, like little uh, hit hits, like like a little cookie crumb trail. They could follow and you can kind of get some background. Even though it, it's still like, um, it's still X-Men in a sense. Like they try to implement that in, but not as much. You know what I'm saying? Which is great, like I said. I can't praise James Mangold's direction and the script anymore. It's just, like I said, flawless. So we get to the barn. Now the barn sequence... Wow, one of the most powerful, brooding, dark, and just, like, depressing sequences I've seen. Very shocking. Did not think the movie would go there. Yeah, and it, it went there. Did not hold back. This movie pulls no punches. Like, it it, <laughs> it doesn't shy away. Uh, and, like, Logan warned Charles, like, we shouldn't stay here, but, you know, Charles and people would argue, oh, that was selfish of Charles. They should have just left. No, I don't. I don't think it was. He wanted to show Logan that what it feels like to be part of a family again. If you didn't get that, I'm sorry, but that's what I got. It does not make him selfish. That just makes him a human being. You know, yeah, it cost them their lives, but still, you can't just point your finger at, at, at you know at Charles of all people, man. I just God, man, that just broke my heart even more. Um. Yeah, so we get we get to meet this family, um, this African American family, the mom, the dad, the son. You know, they live in a farm. It's great. They, I love the scene where the the horses get loose in the highway, and then Charles utilizes his uh, power to calm them down. It's just great, just a great moment. I love that moment so much. It's just like a reminder, like how great Professor X was and still is 
you know, always trying to do the right thing. And yeah, <laughs> I, I like the sequence when, uh, well, the scene where uh, Logan finds out Charles hasn't been taking his pills. So he gives him the water. He's like, he's like, here, take these, okay? He's like, I want to see it. <laughs> oh, God. You know, there's little subtle humor, barely any, but there is some. But when it's utilized, it's great. You know, it's great. And I love that. And, and then Logan's always cursing. He's like, I don't give a fuck. And then <laughs> Charles is like, Logan, you have to be better than that. Don't talk like that in front of Laura. Like, oh, she can't hear a few naughty words? Oh, please. She probably heard a lot of fucking naughty words. Logan, please. For the love of God, stop fucking cursing. <laughs> I love how Patrick Stewart curses. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm in a fucking wheelchair, Logan. Fuck. <laughs> and I love it. Like, the cursing here was uh, understandable. You know, they're just, you know, on this fucking road trip, they're very frustrated, and they've just been through so much. So they're just trying to pull through. And... That's a frustrating situation, you know? But yeah, going back to the barn, you know, you get a great dinner scene with the family. I loved it. You know, Laura's just eating all the mashed potatoes, all the <laughs> corn. And Logan keeps trying to cut her off, like, slow down, kiddo. Like, you know, don't overeat yourself. <laughs> um, and I like how he just picks up Charles. Like, he, he really cares for him like he's his father. Puts him to bed and then... You know, Charles keeps insisting, there is hope. Logan, we have to get to eat it, Logan. He's like, Charles, there is no eating, okay? It's fake. Gabriella made it up, you know. It's all in the comic. It's not real. He's like, it's real for Laura. It's real for me. I just, I love it. This is where, this is where I was feeling an immense dread looming near. Like, I was so... Like, oh my god, I feel like something is going to happen. The axe is going to drop. I don't know how. But when it does, I don't think I'm going to be emotionally prepared. Because, god, it just, the, the way Patrick Stewart portrays uh, Professor X, he doesn't get enough credit in this film. He should. But his acting, man, he's so endearing, man. It felt like, like the grandfather I never had was giving me advice. You know, like, quit being such a cynical bastard and just... You know, like, I, <laughs> it is true, you know, like, Logan, come on, you know. And I like that sequence where he helps out um, uh, one farmer against those rednecks, those racist types, you know. Like, get out of here, we're going to blow your damn brains off, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, shut up. He just takes his rifle and just snaps in half. That was a great moment, you know. You always got to get some rednecks like that. You know, they, they, yeah, they're cliche, but they serve their purpose. You know, Logan did a good deed. He helped them out and stuff. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, and man. And then Laura listened to the music, you know, uh, bonding with uh, the son of the farmer was great. And then this is when the jaw-dropping, shocking moments start happening. I did not expect this to go down this way. We see Charles um, laying in bed, and he's, like, talking how he really enjoyed his time here. And it's just an emotional, just an emotional, gripping, raw scene. You really see the emotion in Patrick Stewart, the way he conveys it. Just, it's so heartbreaking. My God, like, he wanted that for a long time, and then he even admits, like, Logan, I've done something terribly terribly wrong you know it's just i was already oh like you know getting misty i just oh god tearing up you know because he knows what he did charles knows what he did he acknowledges that in that scene but the most heartbreaking part is he's saying that thinking it's logan and it's not and when we look and the camera pans up we see very young looking wolverine you know, with, like, black beard and just, like, shaved head, just, uh, like, a younger version. Like, wait, what? Did he just, did he shave? Did he dye his hair? I was, like, jarred. I was like, whoa. Why does he look different? 
why does he look different? You know, like, and then he just pops his claws into him. Just, oh my God, that just, I jumped when that happened. I almost jumped out of my seat, like, no, you know, and then he slowly pulls it out, and we, oh my God, that look on Xavier's face is like, oh my God, Logan killed me. Logan, like, he thinks he did it. Like, he thinks he failed Logan, and maybe he's thinking in his mind, like, Logan uh, killed him for these uh, transigent people, the, you know, the mercenaries, the Reavers, or whatever. That's what he's probably thinking, or that Logan decided to just end him there, you know, like, for whatever reason, but that sucks, and it's heartbreaking. And Lars just proceeds to attack and stabbing him. And I'm just still in a catonic state of shock. I'm just like, what is happening? Is this a dream sequence? And I'm glad it wasn't. It was their weapon X. And I like how they brought that back. And it was so dark. And it just went to a super dark direction that I was not expecting. You know, the kid gets stabbed. And we see right there through the eyes, you know. We see Donald Pierce and Xander Rice looking. He's like, my God, he's magnificent. And, you know, Caliban is shocked. Because he's like, you only needed the girl. What the hell? I mean, you know, of course, they can't be trusted. God, man, that that form sequence. I was I was in shock. As, as was the audience, you know. When something like that happens mid-portion through the movie. And he just slaughters the entire family. Kills the mom. Kills the dad. God, oh my God. Logan is in shock. He sees his, his old self. And I love that symbolism. Like he's looking into a mirror of the savage, ruthless beast he once was. And it petrifies him. He's just like frightened. Like what? What? You know, it doesn't even occur to him that he's dragging Laura out. Maybe he does, but he's just too shocked. Or more worried about if Charles is okay. And then he rushes up. I love what he tells uh, Charles. Like, was it me? Okay, was it me? Oh my God, breaks your heart even more. And then we get to see young, freaking clone Wolverine shred the rednecks apart. That was great. That was very gratifying, you know, because screw them racist rednecks. <laughs> you know, like, I gave you five thousand dollars, five G's. If you come work for me, you know, you can slice up some chickens and. Uh, <laughs> You know, like, that was funny. I was like, where is that going? Is he going to, like, try to hire him as a bodyguard, like, like Roadhouse style, like Patrick Swayze? <laughs> it's like, I give him five J's, Mr. Wolverine, if you guard this Texas Roadhouse here. <laughs> um. Anyways, getting back into this film, man. And then we get Old Man Logan versus, you know, X-24. The modified new Wolverine, and this this dude is a tank. He's a, the freaking Terminator, in his prime, just shredding Logan, and it's just like, what the fuck? Like, how is this even happening? You know what I mean? You know, it's like you're watching your favorite MMA fighter, who's like undefeated, just get torn up by this other dude you were not expecting. Like, what, what, what? What was it? What is happening? You know, this is mind boggling. You know, and. God, it was a great fight sequence there. Just It was very brutal. It wasn't even a fight sequence. It was like a slaughter. Like, man, you know, <laughs> this was crazy. And the way um, Xavier's death, the way he dies, very tragic. All he can muster out is Sunseeker, the name of their boat. He goes out, and the way he goes out is very... Oh, it's not even anticlimactic. It just felt very, like... How do I say this? It felt... Just very depressing. Like, you weren't expecting him to go out like that. And that's the beauty of this film. You know, he went out just like... any Anyone's grandpa would go out or something like that. Just take his last breath. Maybe say a word to him. And I said, he's, he's gone. He's just gone. And that was truly heartbreaking. My God. You know, Patrick Stewart, great, great actor, deserves a, a supporting actor, best supporting actor nomination, definitely, for that scene. And, you know, Caliban sacrifices himself 
You know, the sacrifice went in vain, man. That is very courageous of him. I, I love that actor. I can't think of his name. Uh, Steven something. I, I know Steven something, I believe. But he's a great British actor, man. He is, you know, he's trying to take out Donald Pierce, but he just took out some of the mercenaries. And I like that line he tells him where he says, like, look into the fire or so sort of look into the light. Look into the light. I think that's what it was. He just throws the grenades. That was great. So now we get closer towards the final act where it focuses and we just have uh, Laura and Logan. And this is where the film starts growing very personal. You know, that this is where I feel like this is this goes beyond a comic book film now. We're crossing into a Western drama here, in a sense. You know, I had very like had elements of Unforgiven. I love that Clean Eastwood film. One of my favorite westerns. And if you watch Unforgiven in Clean Eastwood's character, is not like the man with no name trilogy. He's not that cowboy, that iconic Sergio Leone badass. He's not that. It's very world weary, broken down, you know, ex gunslinger or whatever. Just like Logan is, you know, and I, I love that. So. Yeah, Logan is just messed up. Just, God, he could barely recover. I mean, his abdomen is just torn up. He's barely clinging to life. He's just a bloody mess. And I love the banter with them in the car where, <laughs> where Laura finally talks because throughout the movie, you know, she's just been mute. And I love that. That was just a great surprise. It just Oh, man, that, that, scene, that scene between them was great. And I saw the addition of Daphne Keen. Kudos to her. She crushed that scene. Where he's like, what, what? You can talk? See, what What the fuck is all this bullshit? She's like, no, man, I'm not going to see. I'm not going to see me. He's like, shut, shut up, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I love it. I was laughing hysterically. I love that. You know? When she starts uh, reciting all her uh, friends' names, she's like, stop saying those names. I'm not taking you to North Dakota. I'm not, quit hitting me. You know, it just, I love that back and forth. My God, um. Daphne Keene and Hugh Jackman were great. They just killed that scene. And off they go. And then we get, you know, with the kids, we get introduced to the kids and all that and the green serum. And this, you know, it's funny because all these changes, or these uh, directions they took worked. I loved it. It was so refreshing. You would think, okay, the clone of Wolverine. We've seen this done in movies before. It worked wonderfully, especially towards the end. You know, like I said, it symbolizes how Wolverine used to be and his past coming back to haunt him now. Literally, <laughs> like his past coming back to kill him, you know, it was catching up to him. So I, I love that symbolism. And with the kids, too. With the kids, my God, these were the most interesting mutants I've seen in a long time, you know. Spin-off worthy, I say, you know. So I love all these kids. You know, I like how... Logan, you know, he he did he did his thing, and he said that he's just gonna go on his way. And Laura is just so disappointed, cause she's like found her father. She, you know, and it's very understandable. You know, she she wants her father to be there. She wants she needs that father figure. You know, cause you just look at how violent this child is. My God, you know, she she needs some parenting, please. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I love that that scene where she shows him the adamantium bullet, and Logan. The, I like the way Hugh Jackman delivered this line. So powerful, so freaking the acting is off the charts. Like, you know, she shows him the bullet. She's like, "Yeah, though, you know, what's this?" And he's like, "The that's an adamantium bullet." That he just casually tells her, and then he casually tells her. You know, I was um, I was thinking about blowing my brains out with it, you know, and it's like, damn, like, God, like I feel that, like, oh my God, like, you can tell, like he he been contemplating suicide for a while, you know, so he carries the damn thing around, and you know, she's just disheartened because she doesn't want to see that, you know, like everybody, um, expectations, you know, when you meet. Uh, certainly like a father figure or a legend or idol, whoever, and then you don't get that. You get something totally different. It's like, 
you just feel so vastly disappointed, you know. And you would think they will learn, but the, sometimes they don't want to learn. You know, they got to figure that out on their own. And I know I love that. You know, I love what he tells her. Like he said, like you know, I can't allow people to get close to me because the people that get close to me, they die, and it sucks. And then she goes, I ain't got nothing to worry about them, and leaves. That was, God, that was just powerfully acted scene between the two. And the uh, you know when he had nightmares, she said oh, pesadilla, which means nightmare. And he's like, she goes, I have nightmares um, about you know killing people or something like that. And he says he has the same nightmares of what he does to people, you know. Yeah, so I I, I love the, the the scenes between them when they're in the cabin with the kids is just powerful stuff. And then we get to the final act, and whew, man, just thinking about it, man, this is where Logan transcend, transcends itself apart from any comic book film, and it hits you in the feels, and and it's great too because he takes the green juice and goes full berserker rage Wolverine like. Ah! And I love that. I love when he catches up and Laura hears that war cry, famous war cry. And then if you listen closely, the soldiers actually say, oh, no, it's the Wolverine. I fucking love that. Like, yes. You know, at that moment, he was the legendary Wolverine. He was an old man, broken Logan. You know, he has a purpose. And his purpose is to save his daughter, his daughter and get these kids across the border. He, he knows it's the right thing to do. You know, you got to get these future X-Men across the border, man, these future kids, uh, I love that, and, um, what Wolverine does here, you know, it's the most heroic thing I've ever seen any superhero do, whether it's reading the comic or in film, it really is, like, my god, it wasn't, like, he got, he got past all the BS he believed in, being cynical, World weary, just self preservation. I don't need anybody. I need no attachments in my life. He cannot walk out in 30 seconds flat without spotting the heat around the corner. He, Robert De Niro, <laughs> you know, he, he, he went from being that character to something more, you know? And I love that. Oh my God, that's why I can't praise this movie enough. And we get that fantastic sequence. Him shred, shredded dudes working side by side with his daughter, you know, like, I'll cover you. Ooh, and she just jumps off his shoulders. Like, yes. I loved it. You know, the green serum wears off. And, you know, I love the kids' powers, too. And people were complaining, like, where are the kids running? You know, they could just fight back. And, you know, I feel like, you know, they're just kids. At the end of the day, they're kids. They have these powers, but, you know, they don't want to go full-blown kill people. You know, they, they just want to get away, you know. They just, all they're focused on is trying to get across the border, you know. A group of kids, that's all you want to do. If you get cornered, yeah, you're going to defend yourself. So it, it makes sense, you know. At the end of the day, they're just kids, you know. And um, and people will argue, well, they ganged up on Donald Pierce, you know, with their powers. But at that point, why not? I mean, he was basically torturing them. I mean, you saw a documentary, right? <laughs> so, yeah, like, oh, that was a great death, by the way. The way Donald Pierce goes out, oh, boy, Holbrook. <laughs> God, he's such a snarky character. I love this character. He played it so great. And I love the fact that Logan shoots Xander Rice in the, in the, <laughs> in the face, like, with a, with a freaking revolver. I love that. He was monologuing. He's like, oh, yeah, I think I killed your father in the Weapon X program. He's like, I think you might have, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we get the final throwdown between X-24 and Logan. God, it's just so hard to watch. He's getting torn up. You know, and then that kid, uh, the kid that has those earth-moving powers, you know, drops a freaking, like, a Hummer on him, like, one of those army trucks or whatever. Damn. And he even took that. And I love the attention to detail when Laura grabs the gun, puts the adamantium bullet in, and blows freaking X-24's head off, clean off. Like, man. That blood spatter effect was crazy, you know, it looks so real, then we get to the most heartbreaking moment in any film, I mean, out of all the six times in the theaters, and all the many times I watched it, in my Blu-ray copy here, 
I always cry. This is the scene that always gets me, you know. And what's fascinating is you go back to the Wolverine and what um, how the one Japanese character that you know has visions of the future. So you die holding your heart in your hand. Oh my God, what do you what? It all comes full circle. I love that, you know. James Mangold kind of like tie that in, you know. Whether it was intended or not, I love that subtle touch, that subtle callback, you know. And Logan is just there. He's been put through this damn, like, pointy bark of the tree, like, just impaled, which is effed up. And he, his healing factor is, is just gives out right there. People are bitching, like, he wet. He, Logan freaking died on a damn uh, wooden spike or whatever, you know. Like, that's, that's the problem. People need to, again, take your expectations out. Remember, this is Logan, not the Wolverine we're watching, you know? And right there, oh my god, Hugh Jackman's emotional performance, and then Daphne King crying, the part where she says, Daddy, always breaks me. Always breaks me. Like, you know, he tells her, don't become what they want you. You know, like, don't become what they made you, pretty much. And then when he says, so. Oh, this is how it feels like, you know, kind of like accepting what it feels like to have a daughter, to have something to care for, to have something worth fighting for, worth dying for. And it just always breaks my heart. It's just a tragic, beautiful, heartbreaking, emotionally gut-wrenching death I've seen in any film. Like, I've not seen many deaths and this this one just affects me the most. Like I said, it, it hits me personally because, um, you know, it's like she gets a dad she always wanted just for him to die right there, hand in hand. And it's like I can relate to that because, I, I, you know, I have my dad right now. And he's not doing so great, so when that time comes, I know it's going to be hard because I know he's going to display that emotional side I always want to see in my dad. And if that happens, it's just going to break me and destroy me, you know, but... You know, the grieving process is going to be very painful, but, you know, we can all get through it just like Laura did. And it's just, God, it's just, it breaks me. It really does. That's why I have such an emotional bond to Logan. I love this film so much. It went there. It gave beautiful send-off to Wolverine. And then we get that great uh, monologue of Shane, you know, uh, where Laura is reciting the words, like, there's no living with the killing. You know, go and run home to your mother now. God, just gets me every time. And the kids go. And the best part, the best callback, was when she turned the cross into the X. He died as Logan. He will live on as an X-Men, as Wolverine. Beautiful effing ending and it's like the legend died here not going out in the blaze of glory not going out stopping sentinels or magneto or whoever it may be or fighting on the statue of liberty no this legend went out in a pile of rubble he's buried underneath these rocks in the middle of fucking nowhere near the canadian border where no one will ever find his grave and just something about that is so daunting so haunting it's so realistic, you know, but she knows, those kids knows, and freaking Logan knows he didn't die for no reason, you know. He died so his legacy, his future with Laura can live on, you know, tell the story of the great Wolverine who, in his dying moments, did one of the most courageous and selfless acts ever, you know. I just, oh my God. Then we get the title card, Logan, and that Johnny Cash song plays. And it, it breaks my heart. I was in tears. I was in an emotional mess. I'll never forget it. Logan. So, yeah, that pretty much wraps up my in-depth review of Logan as to why I consider this film such a masterpiece and the number one film 2017 and the number one comic book film out there. It just... It did so much for me. We hit the one hour mark. So I'm ready to close this out. 
if you watched it all the way through, I really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this review. And subscribe if you're new to my channel. And I'll catch you in the next one.